So today we're going to be talking about welding expanded metal. So the thing with expanded metal is that, well, if, if you don't really know what you're doing or the right approach to take, you're going to blast through or just melt this stuff away, lickety split, and you're not even going to know what happened. So the trick with welding expanded metal is, well, there really is no trick. If you take away the expanded part and you just view expanded metal for what it is, is some thin sheet with some holes in it, you're going to approach welding expanded metal the same way you would approach welding thin sheet. To something else. Probably 99% of the time is this is going to be your super thin material versus what you're welding it to. So the same technique that we use for welding thin sheet to thicker material is going to apply here. So as you're welding, you're going to focus the majority of that heat onto that thicker piece of material and you're going to want to push the puddle over on top of the expanded metal. Now, of course, with expanded metal, you can't run a long bead because, well, you don't have any material there to run a long bead on. You have little bits and pieces. So it's almost like you are spot welding or tack welding each little part of the metal. Now, does that mean that you need to weld every single little prong sticking up from the expanded metal? That really depends on your particular project, the design, uh, the aesthetic of it all, what you're going to be seeing, and what the purpose of the project is. Uh, if you're doing something that is just sort of decorative, then you might want to do that. If you're doing something like a, like a trailer, it, you might not need to do every single little prong sticking up. Really, it's, it depends on the, each individual case of the project, and plus just how crazy you want to go with it. Now when welding two pieces of expanded metal together, when you're butting them up together, the same thing applies. What is the purpose of your project? Is it just artsy fartsy? Is it just nice to look at? Then you want to have some nice clean welds and make it nice and flush and you know, do the best you can. If this is going to hold any kind of weight or be structural in any way whatsoever, you are definitely going to want to overlap your pieces. And also, you might just want to have another piece of thicker material just in the middle to brace this together. Because, you know, once you start welding this stuff together, it's very thin, guys. It's not going to be that strong. So overlapping and adding a little support from another piece of metal would be a great idea. But again, it depends on your project. Just take the same technique that we have taught you uh, in previous videos on how to weld thin material to thick material or just thin material in general and use those same principles. But I do recommend before you get started on a major project, just get yourself some extra material, cut off a few little pieces like this and do some practice runs because really this is so easy to burn through and it just, it just melts away. It just goes away and you can't really fix that or get it back. There's no real patching in it looking good, right? All right, guys, that's it for this one. I will see you next week. Yeah, stay warm.